WNDS Sports and Flat State Megabucks present Candlepin Skins. It's bowling with a whole new twist as New England's best bowlers battle for cash prizes in every box. Candlepin Skins is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to the London Dairy Bowling Center, another edition of Candlepin Skins here on the Winds of New England. We're happy to have you along, and another weekend of great bowling action begins here on uh, WNDS. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, and last week, uh, Joe Ashline putting on another clinic. He struggled in the first game, but then he comes right out in the second game, gets a double strike early, and he goes from fourth place to first. This will now be his ninth week on with us, and in the eight previous weeks, he's finished first seven times. Uh, to close the last week, I said, don't look over your shoulder, but maybe we should. He probably should be <laughs> should be in here. He's doing everything else. He's doing a great job, and he was down and out last week until he threw the double strike. And a great story in second place last week is Mike Morgan and Tim Lipke were engaged in a terrific battle uh, coming down the stretch. Mike needed a nine box, and he had a very interesting strategical decision to make in the last box because there was a skin available. He could have halved the skin with a spare, but he wanted to make sure he got the nine box. Yeah, five, six, and ten left with a piece of wood. He elected to go for the nine box, so he's back here this week. And they will be joined by two new bowlers. It'll be Joe Ashline and Mike Morgan returning. Pat Pay from Summersworth, New Hampshire is here. Rico Baldinelli from Amesbury, Massachusetts is here. We're expecting another terrific hour here on Candlepin Skins, and we'll be back to get the match started right after these messages. Don't go away. Oh, yes. you know your face? It's, yeah, what do you know? It's Joe Ashline again. <laughs> and Rico Baldinelli almost starts with a strike. Joe Ashline with his record-breaking ninth consecutive appearance here on Candle Pinskins. The old record was eight, held by Rich Lottie. Joe starts with a seven. Rico starts with a ten. Now Pat Pay and Mike Morgan. Pat a little bit full on the head pin. Won't let that leave much, although the wood is moving out a little bit. We'll see. Mike Morgan, nine drop. Mike Morgan didn't uh, assure his return this week until the very last box a week ago. Well, let's see if that wood rolls back onto the plate and turns a little bit for the four. I don't think so. Pat's wood didn't come back or come forward quite as much as he would have liked, and Mike's wood has rolled off completely. Well, a chance for Mike to skew the first skin. He's got it. That's a spare worth $10 for Mike Morgan, and Pat Pay will take a nine. Again, four bowlers. As always, here on Candlepin Skins, competing individually, and each box is a separate competition or skin with a dollar value assigned. We bowl two games here during the hour. The uh, first three boxes of each game are worth $10. The next three are worth $15 each. The next three, seven, eight, and nine, are worth $25, and the tenth box in each game worth $50. And if there is a High score, a bowler that gets a solo high score in each box, they win the skin. If the high score is tied, for instance, say two bowlers get spares, then the dollar value is carried over to the next box and it mounts up. Well, all of a sudden Rico finds himself in a lead with a 10 box. I don't think that's going to stand. Now, what is our lowest box for a skin? Was oh, did we have an eight? I one believe time? we had an eight, eight win one time. I know we had a nine a couple of times. Actually, I think nine is probably it. I don't think we ever had an eight win. Oh, there's a big strike for Pat Bay, and Pat will take the skin for ten dollars. And 
Mike Morgan will be left to try and solve this. And he'll take eight. Pat Page strike. Yes, sir. So, much the opposite of last week. We had a lot of carryovers early, early in the match. So far, we had the skin one in the first and the second frames. Both bowlers full on the head pin, both Joe and Rico. Oh, great try, great try. Oh, wow, that was a great effort by Rico Baldinelli. Joe gets his 10. And Rico gets his, what a great spare try that was. Let's take another look at it, in fact. Plays it on the inside, gets the two, four, and seven, and almost the six pin. Pat Pay working on a strike. Looking for two. Almost had two pins. I meant two strikes. <laughs> Mike Morgan punches through also. Well, we've already created a carryover with tens unless somebody marks here. So unless Mike converts the spread eagle. Nope. So there'll be no marks here in the third. And we have a carryover with tens. And a six box for Mike Morgan. And groans from the fans here in Londonderry. <laughs> The fourth box will now be worth $25 with the carryover, and Rico Baldinelli will fire first. Off target, but he's going to have a makeable spare leave in the 1, 2, and 9. Joe kicks out the 6, 10. Rico for the spare. His first mark. Joe still looking for his first, and there it is. So they're both on the board with spares. Here's Joe Ashlines. This is a tough leave. It's deceptive looking. Yes, especially that eight pin in the back. He usually clear out the two, four, and seven, but that sleeper, but he was flush on the two pin, which helped. So we've got two spares up there already. It'll take a strike to win the skin. And not this time. Although Pat got a nice mix on that ball. So another carryover. Wow. No for Mike. Pat gets his with the wood. So three spares in box number four. Ten box for Mike Morgan. That's going to leave Mike Morgan in fourth place after this box is finished with the spare fills. Box number five worth $40, and Joe Ashline working on a spare. Comes up short, just five on the film. And Rico is flush on the head pin again. He'll take seven on his fill. Oh, great spare. Two in a row for Joe Ashline. Making it look easy on that shot. Shot. And Rico will take his 10 for a 57 half. Joe has number two in a row. Great shot. And he takes the lead for the skin, which is a double carryover. Carryover from the third and the fourth frames. We talk about playing the inside a lot, Dan, and that was a, an example of it there with Joe putting the ball between the head pin and the six pin to make that shot. It seems to me that that's a fairly recent strategy that's come more and more into play in the last five to ten years. I, I, I don't I, remember more than ten years ago you saw many people do that. Um, yeah, you're probably right. I think maybe a lot of that has to do with the plastic, the way the plastic pins now come off the sidewalls. You, if you get that head pin moving, you have more chance of making it than, than before with, uh, the, with the wooden pins. But. Ask some of the old timers if that was a rule of thumb there. We will take a break. Joe Ashline gets the skin for $40 with that spectacular 
I think we got spare shot. And we will take a time out here on Candlepin Skins. Don't go away. Rico Baldinelli. Shoot at the triangle, two, four, five. Joe Ashline now working on a spare. Made that great spare last time up. Yeah, getting back to that playing the inside that we were talking about before the break, I just don't recall even, even back at the beginning of our show 10, 11 years ago, uh, that many bowlers using that strategy. And, uh, and going back even before that, that would be interesting to find out. Of course, it could be, uh, like a lot of people ask me, are you shooting for the 1-3 pocket or the 1-2 pocket? I'm shooting for the head pin. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm going to go into one of those pockets. Maybe the same strategy here is that they're shooting for the object pin, hoping they're either yeah. going to split it or play it on the inside, and it happens to play it on the inside. Let's, maybe we're giving too much credit to the bowlers. <laughs> maybe they're really not that accurate. <laughs> well, it's like pitching. You can't put the ball exactly where you yeah, want to right. every time. You just kind of shoot for an area. That's and right. You're trying to. Right. Mike Morgan for the spare, and he oh, gets yes. it! And a nice kick into the corner, creating the carryover in the sixth. Bad pay for his spare, and good thing uh, Mike got it. <laughs> the smiles of Mike. Hey, something get me rolling here. Man. And Pat will take a 10. The score's very close here, and here's Mike's break on the uh, four horsemen. A little heavy on the head pin, but gets a kick. It wasn't for the wood next to the six pin. I don't think he would have gotten the 10. That means the seventh box is now worth $40 after the carryover. And Joe Ashline on his spare will take eight. Bad, Joe. Rico is right in the pocket. Fans here thought it would have been a strike. Joe for four marks in a row. Yes. Rico creates a carryover. Yep. Unless someone's able to throw a strike, of course. Either Pat or Mike. Pat has a strike already. That's the only strike in the match so far. Pretty good looking ball, but he leaves two. Mike Morgan on a spare, and he leaves. Oh, I thought it was going to be two, but it looks like it'll be three. Spare for Pat Pay. Another carryover, of course. Oh, oh yeah. spares all the way across. I don't Line know. shot by Mike Morgan. I don't know if you heard the comment that Mike came back after he made the four horsemen. He says, I need something to get me going. That certainly will. A five, nine, and seven pins. Spares all around in the seventh, and another big first ball from Rico Baldinelli. He drops nine. Things are heating up. Yes, seven pin drop. Looked a little better. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Oh, Rico missed the single. Missed the five pin. This uh, eighth box worth $65. Joe for the spare, and he played it a little too far left. And Rico misses again for a nine box. Joe will also take a nine, leaving the stage open for Pat Pay and Mike Morgan now to work on their spares. Mike a little bit short. Left that ball out to the right. Six on his spare. And Pat throws the big one. Strike on spare to win the skin for $65. Oh, almost for Mike. He thought he made it. Boy, that would have been another spectacular shot. Instead, he'll take a 10. The skin will go to Pat Pay. 
And we'll take another look at Pat's strike. Did I say $65? That's what that skin was worth for Pat Pay. Joe Ashley on lane 30 now. And fall on the head pin and kind of an ugly spare lead. Rico. Oh, yes. He was due. He was starting to throw the ball pretty good in the pocket. Wasn't getting a real good break for the strike. A lot of eight to nine pin drops. That time he did carry the. Rico's probably just happy that he carried everything after missing the single. That's true. A minute ago. You know, usually that happens. So after you miss a single, you got to figure the next ball is going to be eight, <laughs> nine, or ten. Make you feel real, real good about it. Here you strike, just tripping that four pin. Well, Pat Pay can uh, have the skin by throwing another strike. And of course, it would be two in a row for him, two strikes. Looks pretty good. Not quite. One more chance. And no. So the first skin of the day goes to Rico Baldinelli for his first skin of the day, I should say, for $25. So everybody's on the board now. Oh, and Pat oh, made shot. a great shot there. Certainly did. That's spare on strike. And you could tell by his reaction that's exactly what he wanted to do. Spare for Mike Morgan in the ninth. Here's Pat Pace spare. Had, had to cap that, so the ball took the nine pin. Wood took the seven. Great shot. $50, 10th box, and Rico Baldinelli works on a strike. Oh, another great Oh, ball. that's a another double. Strike. <laughs> Crowd loves it here. <laughs> And Joe just misses with the 10 pin. Well, Joe's probably gonna be in a very similar position to where he was last week after game one. Might be a little closer though. One, 123 for Joe and Rico Baldinelli with the double. Again, tripping the four pin. Now filling the strike. This is gonna give him the lead, at least temporarily. So Pat Pay gets up. Oh yes, 20 more in the 10th. 142 for Rico Baldinelli. And he may come up with another $50 skin here unless either Pat or Mike can strike. Both Mike and Pat working on spares. Mike first. And he takes it. Stealing that skin away from Rico Baldinelli, creating the carryover into game two. Oh, Pat Pay almost. Nine for Pat, 134. And now, Mike Morgan will fill his strike in the 10th. This has no effect on the skin, of course. It's already been carried over. Well, Joe Ashline's gonna be fourth again. <laughs> second week in a row after game one. Right where he wants to be. Oh, Mike missed the spare, but he gets the nine fill. So it doesn't really cost him that much in the 10th. He'll have a 131, and that's only good enough for third place after game one here on Candlepin Skins. We've got another game to go. We're back in Londonderry in a minute. Pat Pay has the most skins money so far. Everybody's on the board, though. The overall leader in pinfall is Rico Baldinelli as we move to game two. And Joe Ashline, who last week was in this exact same spot. After one game, he was in fourth place, and he was 22 pins out of first. Today, he's in fourth place, and he's 19 pins out of first. <laughs> 
He wound up finishing first last week. Right, grab a couple. Of course, that's the advantage of this format is you don't have to jump over three people. You only have to jump over two if you're in fourth, but right. still, that's, that's tough to do on a week-in and week-out basis. Joe is making it harder on himself by doing it this way. Joe had a funny game that first game. He had four marks in a row in the middle and nothing else. Yeah. Rico Baldinelli. Now. Where Rico was in about a four box stretch there in game one where he just threw every ball buried right in the pocket. He had ended up with a double strike. And that helped him take the lead. Oh, Rico goes for the 10 and gets it. A very difficult shot on the 1 9 and 10. Certainly was, and that put him in the lead for the skin. This is a carryover, so this is worth $60. Tens haven't been standing up. No, they haven't. And they won't this time either. That pay with the big bomb. That's his third strike. Mike to have it, or Pat will take it. And it will be Pat's skin for $60. Pat continues to lead. He now has $135 today. Oh, and he's going to get it. Mike's got it. How about that? That ball was half into the pit already and just caught enough of the lane and swung back to the left. Watch this. Right there. And he came back and knocked down the seven pin for the spare. Joe Ashline. Well, Joe can't afford to wait too long before he's got to start marking. Last week in this spot, he put a double strike on the board, and that really helped. And there's a great spare right there. With three and seven. Look at that. Seen some great shot making, both last week and this week. Rico, his bid for a spare in the 5-8. And he's got it. A $10 skin here in the second, and now it'll take a strike to win it. Pat Pay steps up working on a strike. Think he's thinking double? <laughs> I'm sure he is. Let's see. A little light. That six pin would fall. Never know, come in contact with a piece of wood out in front. Now he's got a difficult five, six, nine, ten. Oh, oh got shot. It. From the back. Oh, the old buck can still do it, can he? <laughs> <laughs> Plays this one right on the nose. Needs a little help with the five pin. All right, Mikey, come on. So three spares. Mike can steal with a strike. That vaults pad into the lead. Nope, so we have a carryover. Third box will be worth $20. It's only a five fill on the spare by Mike Morgan. Trying to split the three six. Oh, very nearly did. Ten for Mike. Again, call your attention to the bottom of the scoreboard page as we have the two-game running totals at the bottom so that you can keep track of where everybody is. And the top two in total pinfall will return next week. Oh, look at this for, for Joe. I thought he might get the two pin also. He had the one, two, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now it's a little more manageable. Slides by the head pin. <coughs> and there's the 10. That might have been one of those cases on the second ball uh, where you, as you said earlier, you shoot for the head pin and whichever side it goes is fine. And 
Just missed it to the inside. Rico with a seven on his spare. Shoot at the three, seven, and ten. Pieces of wood that could help him. Yep. Yes. Three pins standing and three pieces of wood. You heard Mike uh, Morgan. I thought the seventh pin was going to be trouble for you. I thought so too. He was able to uh, manage to knock it down for two in a row and maintain his lead. That's seven fill on Pat Pay's spare. And Another he's got one. it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three in a row for Pat Pay. <laughs> Rico congratulating Pat and reminding him that he's hot. <laughs> Three marks in a row, and we will have another carry over here in the third. Uh, Morgan has to put some offense up, falling further behind if he doesn't mark. Not this time. Right now, it's Rico and Pat very much in control. They are running one and two, and both with marks up here in the third. So a carry over to the fourth, which will now be worth $35. And uh, it's advantage Pat Pay and Rico Baldinelli right now. Oh, Joe Ashline almost touches them all. Leaves the eight pin. No. Oh, he, I think he thought he missed it. He turned it over. Little, I thought he had missed it, too. A little body English helped it off. <laughs> Hi, Rico. I thought he had turned that one over a little bit too much. Rico Baldinelli on a spare. Oh, oh how about a strike? Wow. Talk about somebody who's hot. There's a man right there. Pat Pay, three marks in a row. Working on a spare. Ooh. Just four. Wow, I thought he had a chance when he let that go. It'll be an eight box. So it's Rico Baldinelli's skin unless Mike Morgan can throw a strike here. Oh, great pocket hit, and there it is. Wow, Rico just shakes his head. Look at him. <laughs> Congratulates him, but grudgingly. <laughs> Not only did he take the skin away from him, but he needed that strike. Mike Morgan is in third place right now. Joe Ashline still in fourth. He's working on a spare. Joe needs to find his strike ball here going down the stretch. That carryover with strikes makes this fifth box worth $50. Joe for the spare, yes. Didn't throw a great ball in the first ball, but he made up for it with this one. Joe is trying to come from behind again. Now Rico Baldinelli on his strike. Just off the head pin that time. And it's a nine. 75 half for Rico Baldinelli. He's in the lead. Pat Pay closely behind though. Gets a mark here. He could pull within a few pins after the fill. Oh, great ball. Wow. Like it might have been a strike ball for Pat. Now that wood may be a problem. That's a real problem, but he's made a few shots like this. He's just got to cap the wood, try to turn it, drive it straight back into the four and the eight. 
Not an easy shot. Could come off the wall. Oh, oh got it. Makes it look easy. Pat Pay has seven marks in his last nine boxes. Double up. Mike Morgan on a strike. He'd love a double. You heard somebody in the crowd say double up. Nope. Could have won the skin too with the strike, but instead it'll be another carryover. All of a sudden the focus again now at this time in the match switches more toward the score now than the skins. Let's see who's gonna come back. Not a good ball by Mike. Eight fell on the strike, but didn't give him a chance of making the spare. He'll take nine and we will take a break. We're gonna have a $65 six box when we return to Londonderry in a minute. Joe Ashline is working on a spare. In fourth place right now. Now that is gonna help. Not quite on the four pin. He tapped it, but it didn't go over. Joe just brimming with confidence right now. He just feels he's gonna get enough marks and get back into the match and be back next week. And that's- He may very well wrong. be right. <laughs> 203 ties him with uh, Pat Pay, although Pat has a uh, a box in hand. This is a $65 carryover skin. And Rico has a tough lead here. And Rico's got to be careful too. Not that far ahead of Joe and Pat, both of them working on marks. Now Pat Pay working on a spare and checking the scoreboard. Also, when the bowlers are up on the lanes, they have a good view of the big double scoreboards here operated by Cindy Sisson. And they keep a close watch on what's going on. You have to pay attention in this format because do. it goes by quickly and things change quickly. Well, Joe Ashline leads for this carryover. This is a $65 carryover, and that's a nine box, so a strike, and it could be Mike's. Dual purpose here, to win the skin, but to give himself a mark and try to get back in total pinfall-wise. Mike Morgan must nope. spare to carry over this skin or else it goes to Joe Ashline, but Mike needs the mark anyway. Regardless of the skin situation here. Can he make it? No, so give the $65 skin to Joe Ashline. And Mike is gonna need to do some work in the last four boxes as he is running fourth right now. Well, Joe can pull within a mark of Pat Pay with a decent fill. But he can't make a mistake. On the spare. And he'll take six. With an interesting wood formation here. And he's just gonna go right after the two pin and hopefully he'll catch some of that wood just to the right. And then I'll jump into the 10 pin. Got it. No problem. Four in a row. If they were on a string. Shot, Joe. Four marks in a row. Joe has marked four in a row in the same four boxes he did it in the first game. Rico leaves the two and the eight. He does have wood, but let's see. Oh, oh yeah. Punched that out like a half whistle. That's exactly what it looked like. Great would, spare. Would never moved. One to the left and one behind. It never moved either one of A $25 skin here in the seventh. All of a sudden, Pat Pay finds himself needing a mark. One, two, six, ten.
No. Well, here comes Mr. Ashline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great 10 for Pat. 28, nine pins in front of Joe Ashline. Not the conventional way to do this, but it worked. It worked. Mike's still not out of it, but he needs to put some marks up right now. And there oh. is one, and he takes the skin also. A $25 strike for Mike Morgan, and it was a quick one. First skin he's won since the first box of the day. So the eighth box will be worth $25, and the scores get tighter and tighter. Uh, Mr. Headpin again believes himself the one, three, six, and the five pin behind the headpin. Yes. Five in a row for Joe Ashline. He's got uh, five, six marks, and four of them have six fills on them. The other one has a nine. That's keeping him in the match. Ooh, got a good break on the four pin going down. That's eight on Rico Spare. For another? Yes. This has just been a great match. And it's going to come right down to the end, you know this. Although Rico Baldinelli is looking in pretty good shape. Yeah, right he's now. really in the driver's seat. Pat needs a mark. No, it's not going to be an easy one. Five, six, and ten. Uh, I, I just try to cap the wood in front of the 6-10 and hopefully the ball will carry the 5, but you might leave the 6 or 10 standing. But it was too deep to, to play it from right to left. So he's going to be open. Advantage Joe Ashline. And Mike Morgan's got to be thinking double strike. Well, he can steal another skin here if he hits the strike. If not, we'll have a carryover. Mike is right through the center with it. Not what he wanted. And now he needs an escape ball. No, no, that's not it. No. A five box. That just about did him in, I believe. Not mathematically, but certainly puts him behind the eight ball. Joe Ashline, big ball. He leads, uh, well, he's actually three behind Pat Pay, but he's gonna pass him with this ball, I would assume. Oh, and no. Joe has the nice. same leave. The same leave that Mike Morgan just had. So that puts him even with Pat Pay at 238 through boxes completed. Oh boy. Boy, took a chance there and came out of it with a nine. That's a good score with that third ball situation. Well, advantage swings back over to Pat Pay's side of the scoreboard. Now if he could put a mark up in the ninth. Eight fill on a spare for Rico Baldinelli as he continues to be in uh, cruise control here. And it would turn pretty good for him. Got to be on the right-hand side of that five pin, though. Nope. Let's see, anything right on the five or to the left was going to just take the five pin, leave the nine. So it's a ten. Rico still looks to be in pretty good shape, though. I don't think he has too much to worry about. No. Hard to think that two bowls would catch him. Pat Pays in a fight with Joe Ashline. Needs a mark, trailing by nine. Misses the head pin. It's a bit of a break. At least he has something to shoot at. He's got to be thinking one pin here, and that's the head pin. Oh, did he get oh. it? No. I think he thought he made it. 
That puts him tied with Joe Ashline. This would give him a one pin advantage with one frame to go for that second spot. And no. it'll be tied. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it had to be. <laughs> you knew it had to be. And now the uh, stage wide open for Mike Morgan here, who may not be able to come back next week, but he could win himself, win himself uh, a little extra cash here. $50 for a mark in this box. Yeah, if the mark was a strike, I wouldn't count him out. He could throw that double. Oh, boy, and through the middle again. Oh, ten pin Lafarico's looking better and better. <laughs> I'd say this this would be worth 50 bucks if he makes this. Yeah, try to play the 2-4, I believe. Oh, oh Rico, look at this. <laughs> Rico's kind of squirming now in his seat here, saying, wait a minute, I got a shot at this. Oh, and he's got yeah. it. That's a $50 10 box for Rico Baldinelli. And now our last $50 skin in our last box, which will decide second place. Joe Ashline first, tied with Pat Payne for second. Oh, no. Boy. The momentum swing back and forth. Remember, if there is a tie for second, we would have to roll that off. Ooh, good effort by Joe. Joe trying to extend his streak to 10 weeks in a row, but he oh. is going to have to hope that Pat Pay doesn't mark a 9 box in the 10th. Well, Pat wouldn't have to mark if he could get a 10 box. Rico Baldinelli is going to finish first this week. Ooh. <laughs> the 10 pin. This is a $50 box tendency to lose sight of that skin, the 10th frame when it's so close in total pinfall. For the spare? Yes. Well, Rico had a 142 opening game. He's at 140 plus a ball here in game two. Six, 146 and a two game total of 288 and that will give him first place and he will be back next week no question about that uh, 288 good good score well, all the lies focus on pad pay needs a 10 box to come back next week although like Morgan to throw a triple strike in time oh my look at this well he's got two chances at this <laughs> I like the odds, I think. Uh, me too. And it's going to force a carryover possibly if Mike Morgan does not throw a strike. Spare in the 10th. So Pat Pay will finish in the number two spot. And eliminating Joe Ashline after nine weeks. Well, Joe... Uh, Give him full credit for his comeback a week ago, but you don't want to do that, put yourself in that position every time. Well, seven fill, a 130, 264. This is a strange Pat situation here. Mike can rear back and throw. He can't come back. <laughs> he needs a strike to carry it over, and even if he doesn't get a strike, it still carries over. He's going to another shot at it. That's what will happen. <laughs> All the balls will come back one more time, and then we'll eliminate after that if there's still a carryover. Interesting, that leave right there was the same leave that Mike had last week in the That's last right. box. Five, six, and ten. So we will come back in a moment to settle this last $50 skin. We already know that Rico Baldinelli and Pat Pay finish one and two, and they'll be back next week, and we'll be back in a minute. $50 skin still to decide here. Right now, Pat Pay is the big uh, money winner on the day with $135, but that could change. Joe Ashline. Joe drops nine on a delayed ball. 
Rico just felt the strike work and he didn't want to waste any time by throwing it. For the spare. Joe gets a spare. Rico try to have it. He does. he does. So we know for a fact that they'll come back, only those two, if we don't get a strike out of either Mike or Pat. You see the triangle? Remember, you've got to be involved in having the skin in order to continue from this point on. Pat Pay. Now Pat's out of it. Unless he makes that shot. Mike Morgan. Well, we're going to have to see two big shots here. No for Pat, so he's out of it. And Mike is out of it as well. So we will now keep going. Joe Ashline and Rico Baldinelli will decide it. And they'll stay up there until it's settled. $50 on this skin. Rico first. Joe? Hold it. <laughs> Joe, I don't think Joe could throw the ball any harder than he just <laughs> threw that one. <laughs> I mean, he reared back at that one. Keep the fills, even though the fills don't mean anything. Oh, wow. This could get interesting. Joe makes this. He wins it. Well, let's see. Well, Rico's got to think about this now. He needs a 10 box, maybe. He's going to try and make it that way, and he'll take nine. So Joe will take the $50 if he can knock down the head pin. And he's got it for the last $50 skin. We will return to wrap it up on Candle Pin Skins in a minute. Welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center. Well, it took nine weeks for someone finally, or two guys, to beat Joe Ashline in the same week. He was trying to uh, extend his streak to 10, but he did get a bunch of marks together. He had four in a row in the first game, five in a row in the second game, but uh, a couple of costly shots at the end. Well, that's right, and uh, a lot of spares with only six on him, so that uh, is not indicative of Joe Ashline, but if anyone's taped the show, go back and watch Pat Pay. We lose sight of, because we're talking about skins, but he made some terrific shots with bad wood out in front of those pins, and that's why he's back. A fitting tribute to Pat Pay and his shot making. All right, let's look at the scoring totals then for this match. Rico Baldinelli up on top with the 288. Very impressive day for him. Also uh, lost sight of that in addition to everything else. Uh, Pat Pay in second at 264 and eliminated Joe Ashline after a run of nine weeks and Mike Morgan who was back for uh, his second week in a row. So Rico Baldinelli and Pat Pay will be back. Now check a look on the Skins tote board, Joe Ashline leaves with a pretty good day's pay, $155. He had uh, a nice run here over nine weeks. Pat Pay, of course, returning. He picks up $135. Rico and uh, Mike on the board as well. But we'll see Pat Pay and Rico Baldinelli back here next week, and they'll be joined uh, by Stu Bergman and by Joe Rollins. Uh, two bowlers that have uh, been with us before, I believe, and... Uh Hey, anything can happen. This Skins game is a lot of fun and open to everybody. We hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to be with us tomorrow at noon from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Of course, every Sunday at noon, it's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And tomorrow, it'll be Paul Berger looking for his second win in a row as he will take on Dan LaPlume. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole Wins crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great weekend, everybody.